Hey guys, so today we are not leaving multiplication behind. We are growing our knowledge of multiplication because we're going to take multiplication, right? And we learned at the beginning of some, this summer learning program. You know, I asked the question, what is multiplication? And do you remember what it's a shortcut for? Repeated addition right? Multiplication is a shortcut for repeated addition. So we connected addition to multiplication, right? Well, now I'm going to take multiplication and I'm going to connect it to division. Today's topic is what is division? I'm going to ask that same question about division. It's a little trickier to answer, but I hope you're going to get it at the end. So let's get started talking about this new operation. Okay, so there is this word in math that we don't talk about enough, and it is operation. There are four operations in math, and even though this word might be new to you, operation, you already know the four operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So if you know what an operation in the real world is, an operation is kind of like surgery. It's something you do. Surgery is for like something you do to change your body, right? Maybe you have to have heart surgery to fix your heart, or you could have, I don't know, surgery to fix a broken bone. Surgery is something that changes you. And operations, these are things that change numbers. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If you take the number one and you add something to it or subtract something from it or multiply it or divide it, you're going to change this number one, right? Same thing here. So today we're going to focus on the operation of division, but you're also going to see that it's connected to multiplication. Just like addition and subtraction are connected. And you learned more about that in um, second grade. So here's the connection between multiplication and division, right? Multiplication and division are inverse operations. In, I-N, ver, V-E-R, inverse operations. Inverse operations are operations that are opposite from each other or that undo each other. So let's think about what that means. Okay, so here I have two multiplication problems, right? 3 times 4 equals 12, and 2 times 5 equals 10. These are simple multiplication facts, right? Look what happens here. Okay, so I know this is low tech. I'm not a fancy YouTuber. This is just me and some paper and some markers, but enjoy the magic. Okay, humor me. 3 times 4 equals 12, 2 times 5 equals 10. 12 divided by 4 equals 3. 10 divided by 5 equals 2. 3 times 4 equals 12. 12 divided by 4 equals 3. 2 times 5 equals 10. 10 divided by 5 equals 2. An inverse operation, okay, inverse operations, if you start with something like this, 3 times 4 equals 12, we can basically take that and turn it around into 12 divided by 4 equals 3. Okay, same thing here. We're taking 2 times 5 equals 10, and we're going to take the 10, which is at the end of the multiplication problem. When we put it at the front of a division problem, we still use the numbers 5 and 2. 10 divided by 5 equals 2. This makes a true statement. So inverse operations are kind of where fact families are born, right? We know that multiplication and division are related to each other through fact families. Okay, a fact family is three magic numbers that make four facts. And in class, you might have seen these three numbers in a triangle together, usually with the biggest number on top. This is one way that we like to represent those three magic numbers, okay? And we can write four facts with them. Okay, and here we have them 3 times 7 and 7 times 3. They both equal 21. So when we multiply, we know that we, this biggest number comes last. Okay, when we divide that big number 21, it moves over to the front of the division equation, right? 21 divided by 7 equals 3. 21 divided by 3 equals 7. Each of these facts uses the same three numbers, right? Red, blue, and green. 
three, seven, twenty one, seven, three, twenty one, twenty one, seven, three, twenty one, three, seven. They all use the three magic numbers. OK, they just move them around in the equation. So when we move the numbers in the equation, the number of that, the meaning of that number doesn't really change. It's just what we are looking for that changes. So when you multiply, what you're looking for usually is what it's equal to, right? The product. And the product is the total. It's missing. You don't know it until you draw a number of groups and you put some counters inside of each group. And then you count up all the counters and you find the total. That's your answer. But when we divide, that changes. When we divide, we take the same numbers, 4, 9, 36. We turn them around. Here, 36 is what we're looking for, right? This is the total at the end. But when we divide, that number 36 moves to the front of the equation. When you divide, you don't have to find the total. You already know the total. You're looking for something different when you divide. When you divide, you're looking for the number in each group, okay? So when we divide, usually we're starting with the total number. We'll draw some groups, and we'll put one in each until we find the number in each group. And we're going to talk more about that. But I want you to know, when you divide, this is what you're looking for. This is very important, okay? Division is all about sharing equally, okay? And I love to give the example of Uno cards. I don't know if you've ever played Uno. Let me grab it real quick. So I have Uno, and um, my nieces and nephews like to play it. Uno, the cards, okay? So division is all about sharing equally. This is important. If it's not equal, it's not division, right? And you know when you play Uno, you start with the cards, you take them out, and you split them up equally, right? So kind of like this. Let's say I'm going to play with three people, so everyone's going to get an equal number of cards. One for you, one for you, one for you. Two, two, two. Three, 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 four, 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 five, 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 six, 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 seven, seven, seven. Did I make that equal? Did everyone get the same number of cards? Yes. I just divided up the Uno cards equally. I started with a big number and I split it up into smaller groups. Everyone got the same amount. Okay. By the way, that's called dealing cards. I dealt the cards. Dealing cards is when you take cards and you split them up equally for people to play. So dealing cards is a great example of division. I'm going to look at a re another really basic example of division, right? And so let's say that you have three trees growing and each one, you have 15 apples, right? And they're growing equally on three trees. How many are on each tree? Okay, so let's think back here, right? It's kind of like we're finding the number in each group, like I said before, is what happens during division. But instead of seeing the number in each group, we're going to find the number on each tree. Same thing, right? And here's how dividing looks in equal groups. So I'm starting with 15, and that's the number I'm going to count up to. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, 15 apples grow equally on three trees. How many apples are on each tree? That's what we want to know. How many on each tree? Each tree has one, two, three, four, five apples. 15 divided by 3 equals 5. How many apples are on each tree? Five apples on each. So this is my basic, basic, basic 
What is division? Division is sharing things equally. It's related to multiplication in an inverse way, which means you can turn the numbers around between multiplication and division. Um, yeah, and it's all about finding the number in each group. So good luck with your lesson. Thanks for watching my video all the way to the end.